the blueprint for learning lead guitar. Plan it right and you'll be ripping up the guitar neck. Now it's never too early to start planning this, even if you're a beginner or an intermediate player. Start thinking about this and planning it right and you'll be ripping up that neck. Now the first thing you got to think about is the style of music that is your main focus. Now you don't have to say that I like metal or I like blues or jazz and that's all you can listen to. But you want to have one main focus that you can start with because different genres of music you'll learn different types of scales. Like for instance for blues guitar you're going to learn pentatonic scales. For uh, jazz guitar you learn more of the modes and the major scales. Start working on the subdivisions of the major scale and the modes. And for maybe metal music you'd want to learn natural minor scales. So thinking about the, the genre of music that you're most interested in is a good place to start. Because then you're going to focus on those scales to start with and learn. The next step is to learn those scales across your neck. Now there's always subdivisions of patterns of these scales that you learn and that, that we go through in Rock House Shoe in our courses. Like there's a, for the pentatonic say, there's a first position, second, third position. So there's different positions of that scale across the neck using the same notes but playing them on different spots on the neck. So the first step is to, to decide which genre of music so you know which scales to start focusing on. Learn those scales across the neck and then you can start learning the scales in different patterns. Like we could do triple patterns. Or you do sixteenth notes. Or the sixteenth note patterns. So you learn different types of patterns with these scales so you get really familiar with using the scales. All right, the next step is to start working on riffs. I call it the lictionary. So you take each scale and try to write a couple little riffs that you could use like, as sort of like your signature riffs in that position. So you learn a couple riffs in each position across the neck. And this way you have the whole neck that you could use when you're improvising. And that leads me to the next step is playing over a backing track. Now it's really important if you don't have other friends that play that you could jam with to use backing tracks to play over. So um, uh, for blues it could be a 1-4-5 progression and it's a bass, drum and rhythm guitar and it's just a backing track. We have these backing tracks all through our course that you can use to play over and it, it's like your own band. It's like having your own band there with you. So as the backing track's playing you play the scale and you play the riffs and pretend like you're in the band with the backing track. So it also shows you how to interact with other musicians. This way when you go to play in your own band you'll be really familiar with that and be able to interact with them easily. And finally what you need to do is think about the whole process you know as you as you from the beginning to end. Put all these things down, write them down as you're, as you're uh, learning them, write down your riffs. I really encourage you to have a little notebook or a tab book and write the riffs down so you can always come back to them or record them. It's always great to record them as well. So think about this in this way, uh, plan ahead, start learning the scales that really focus on your main genre of music that you like and start gathering some riffs, learning patterns across the neck and in no time you'll be ripping up that neck.